Can Saudi Arabia and Iran start World War III? War fears surge this last July as the U.S. sends hundreds of troops to Saudi Arabia amid Iran tensions. In May, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced that despite tensions over the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, Washington was selling $8.1 billion worth of arms to Saudi Arabia, these sales will support our allies, enhance Middle East stability, and help these nations to deter and defend themselves from the Islamic Republic of Iran, he announced. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. Iran has a large ground army, but, and it is a huge but, Iran has no way to get to Saudi Arabia with a ground army. If Iran tries to go through Iraq, around the top of the Persian Gulf and avoid Kuwait where American troops are stationed, then it must go through hundreds of miles of open desert where it will be at the mercy of the Saudi, UAE and US Air Forces. All three of these air forces are far superior to the Iranian Air Force. The Iranians tried to establish a bridgehead using Iran's rebel clients in Yemen, the rebel clients of Iran in Yemen are just over a land border from Saudi Arabia's population centers and Saudi Arabia's capital. The Iranians' plans for Yemen were checkmated by the Egyptian Navy and the Saudi Navy and the Saudi and UAE Air Forces the US Navy and US Air Force backed up the anti-Iranian forces. Again, Iran was unable to get its large land army to where they wanted to go, in this case, Yemen. Iran is frustrated by the U.S. strategy, and the U.S. allies' strategy. The U.S. will not fight the type of war Iran wants to fight. Iran wants to fight a ground war of attrition. Instead, the U.S. is more than willing to let Iran wither away inside Iran's land borders with Iran under crippling economic sanctions. If Iran pokes its head out using Iran's navy, Iran's air force, or Iran's conventional ballistic missiles, the U.S. allies are more than willing to destroy Iran's navy, Iran's air force, and Iran's conventional ballistic missiles using superior U.S. weapons. If, repeat if, Iran attacks U.S. flagged ships in international waters near Iran, using Iranian assets. Well, Iran is going to lose Iran's navy and Iran's saltwater port infrastructure, remember the US now has the Moab conventional bomb that can totally destroy infrastructure and ground troops like a tactical nuclear weapon. The United States has used one Moab in combat, and that has changed the world forever. Washington and Riyadh have long been critical allies with King Fahd approving 543,000 American troops being sent into the country during the Gulf War. Riyadh and Tehran currently have no diplomatic relations following an attack on the Saudi embassy in Tehran by mobsters and the execution of Shia cleric Sheikh al namr in Riyadh at the beginning of 2016. Tehran, which is governed under a Shiite theocracy as opposed to Riyadh's Sunnite theocracy, began to openly attack Riyadh and the legitimacy of the Al Saud family following the Islamic Revolution. The two have been considered to have spent four decades engaged in proxy conflicts with major proxy locations being Yemen, Qatar, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Nigeria. These Middle East countries are not after each other's oil, but there are still many things they cannot agree on, including Shia versus Sunni and Arabs versus Persians. Both have an extremely power-focused government structure and follow ancient traditions. Saudi Arabia promotes the hard-line ideal Islamic ideal Wahhabism. Iranians consider Saudis as fanatics, while the latter see the former as kafirs infidel. Both are involved in several Middle East conflicts. So in case of a war between these two countries, who would be involved? Many nations and military groups in the Middle East. While the main war isn't that large, the numerous military and paramilitary factions involved will cause a total breakdown of the Persian Gulf, just like in Syria. It is also likely that the USA and Russia would intervene on Saudi and Iran's behalf, respectively. Why would they go at each other? With Yemen finally secured to the relief of every people living there, Saudi Arabia becomes emboldened by its success. Calling for another Arab alliance, they launch a military campaign to topple Ali Khamenei's regime. Saudi Arabia has the third largest military budget in the world. It's also a dictatorship, and one of the nastiest ones. The rhetoric that comes out of it is just as bellicose as what we're used to from the atomic loon North Korea. The Saudis hate many things, but they hate Iran above all. Iran is recovering from its own silly little atomic loon. They have Turkish-level potential but suffered a lot from corrupt politics and war. Now that Iraq is quite literally out of the picture, they should become quite a power. And that's a thought that makes every Saudi royal blood boil. 
Most military experts see the conflict as a proxy war between Sunni Muslim Saudi Arabia, supported by the US, on one side and Shia Muslim Iran, backed by Russia, on the other. The civil war in Yemen is also a victim of the new power struggle for control of the Middle East, which dates back to the death of Muhammad in 632 AD. But the new Cold War, which some claim involved Saudi Arabia arming ISIS and Iran backing militants such as the Houthi rebels in Yemen, would turn searing hot if Saudi troops met the Iranian army on the battlefield. The U.S. fears Saudi Arabia may have obtained, or tried to get, nuclear weapons for a final battle with its centuries-old enemy. The proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran is now in a rapid state of escalation. The ongoing conflict, widely seen as a proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran, could become even more volatile in the wake of a missile fired at Riyadh. The attempted attack, which was intercepted mid-air over the south of the Saudi capital, targeted Saudi leaders in a royal palace. Previous attacks have led the Saudis to accuse Iran of acts of war, as Tehran has backed the Houthi rebels and is accused of supplying their missiles. Saudi Arabia warned no Arab capital is safe from Iran's aggression during a meeting of Arab League nations in Cairo. The Arab League issued a statement saying it will not declare war on Iran at the moment. It read, we are not declaring war on Iran at this stage. We have not taken a decision to ask the Security Council to meet, but we are just briefing the Council, and maybe the next stage would be for us to meet and call for a Security Council meeting and submit a draft Arab resolution against Iran. From its side, Israel has made no secret of its distaste for Iran's provocations after a senior Israeli commander suggested that working with Saudi Arabia could be the key to countering the threat imposed by the nation. Lieutenant General Gadi Eisenkot said, We are ready to exchange experiences with moderate Arab countries and exchange intelligence to confront Iran. We are ready to share information if necessary. There are many common interests between them and us. The general added that Israel had no intention of attacking Hezbollah in Lebanon, but warned he wouldn't accept the group's military buildup becoming a strategic threat. Hezbollah is a fundamental part of the coalition government in Lebanon. Iran is also using Iraq as a proxy to the nation thanks to political and religious ties. Saudi Arabia is having some severe financing issues right now due to the low price of oil. Just recently, it issued bonds for the first time to borrow on the international market. Many foreign workers were refused payment and expelled because of the lousy state of Saudi finances. Why am I mentioning this? Saudi just signed a deal for $130 billion in US weapons. It has already signed deals for about $6 billion in arms from the UK. That's a lot of weapons to purchase for a nation that is going through an economic downturn. Saudi has become a lot more assertive lately, and for the first time has taken direct steps in the Syrian war, and Yemen. Yemen, in particular, is a sore point between Saudi and Iran, as each supports their religious brethren. The tension between Saudi Arabia and Iran has likely never been so high, to the point where Saudi Arabia has created a de facto alliance with Israel, why is that surprising? Saudi refuses to recognize Israel, and yet they are united on a common threat and enemy, Iran. I wouldn't say that an outbreak of hostilities is likely at this point. One reason is that both nations could not afford a conflict right now. Saudi Arabia needs to sell its oil to prop up its economy, and at the first sign of a conflict, the Strait of Hormuz will be sealed to tanker traffic. Having said that, I do expect the situation to blow up, particularly with the current US administration. Trump has openly attacked Iran on numerous occasions and has bent over backward to support Saudi Arabia. If anything were to happen in the near term, it would be now before this administration is voted out of power during the next elections, or Trump is impeached. Saudi Arabia doesn't stand much of a chance in a war against Iran, billions of petrodollars, or not. But all it takes is enough royals in denial about this fact, and we'll have a conflict. The USA would thoroughly condemn the move, but would also commit everything they have on the side of Saudi Arabia. Because of oil. Now it's Iran that doesn't stand a chance. Iran is allied with Russia and China. And there you have it, World War III. A very plausible scenario for a devastating world war. So what do you think, is a war between these two Middle Eastern countries possible? And can it spill over to become a generalized world war? If Iran and Saudi Arabia have a war, which is certainly possible, I wish the US stays out of it. We created the problem in Iran in 1953 when we destroyed their democracy and put in a proxy dictator to run the Persian Gulf. 
All Saudi Arabia should ever be known for is 3,000 Americans being killed on the 11th of September 01. And now, thanks to Trump, there are only so-called ally. Let Iran fight it out with the Saudis, and it's a win-win for the US if both lose to each other. And for anyone who thinks Saudi Arabia is a real ally to the US as our government does, remember 9-11. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.